you know, you've done your Hollywood work, uh, you've got, and you're working on a TV show right now. Can't talk about that, I'm guessing. Yeah, I can. Oh, okay, you're developing a TV show, uh, a Douglas Adams thing. Yeah, man, I'm in the room uh, nine hours a day. It's crazy. So you've got, so you've got those things, but here we are in comics, and, and you're already getting a taste for how comics are very different than screenwriting oh, yeah. or any other kind of writing, um, and you're getting your taste of comics with these seven issues. Is doing regular comics something that you want to do, or is it something you want to play with every once in a while? It's something, well, it comes down to, you talked to me when I was 15, of course I want to do comics. Right. The amount, the, the funny thing about being, especially working, developing a TV show, is how much time it beats, which is insane. It's a day job. And it goes further than being a day job because you have no hours. So if you haven't solved the problems you need to solve, you're just still there. Right, Pat, right, There's right, no right, right. hours. So uh, I, I want to do comics. I'd like to do another comic, desperately, especially if this one's well received. Okay. Uh, you know, there's there's a real put my money where my mouth is with right. American Alien because I've talked about Superman in public so much right. that this is a great opportunity to get a pie in my face. Because you said in uh, I guess it was 2012 when you did the Death and Return of Superman oral retelling of the story, yes. which is fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Um, I, I, it's funny. Uh, first off. I'll just say as an aside, I forgot a lot about it, a lot of the crazy stuff you talked about in that thing. Like the origin of Doomsday, I completely forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, man. It's so Unlimited insane. Unlimited babies. I, <laughs> but it's clear you, I think you have more of a love-hate, more of love in love-hate relationship with Superman, or is it all love? I don't have a hate relationship. You don't have a hate relationship at all. I have the only thing, at the top of that short, I say nobody gives a fuck about Superman. Right. And what I mean by that is that nobody, I mean, he's a archetype. Right. Uh, Superman, when written wrongly, or when written unimaginatively, uh, and I'm not saying, and I'm the first person to read, I can name a dozen great Superman stories off the top of my head, right. but when written simplistically, Superman is a very bland superhero. He's, an, he's a messianic figure who can fly, is super strong, and has a myriad of other powers. And the more powerful you make him, the less interesting he becomes. Uh, just because you lose track uh, of, of him as an entity and of him as vulnerable. And in my eyes, he is the most vulnerable superhero because his superheroic persona is the closest to who he actually is. And that, that is something incredibly compelling to me about the character, is that he doesn't do a Superman voice. No. It's literally just Clark in a costume. He shows up and tries to help people. Then he goes back, goes to work, goes to bed, goes on a date with his girlfriend. His date is ruined. I have to fly over there. It's not Spider-Man where, you know, Peter Parker is getting out a demon when he's Spider-Man. Yeah. There's a reason he's such a dick to people. is because Peter Parker is kind of an insecure dick, ultimately. I mean, he's a good guy right. in as much as anyone's a good guy, but Peter being Spider-Man has proven to be a fairly irresponsible choice very early in his career. And yet he still talks about great power and great responsibility. Then stop Batmaning, dude. Stop creating your own villains. Right. Uh, Batman, guy who doesn't exist as a human being. I mean, I think when written most compellingly, Bruce Wayne is a mask for Batman. And that really started in the 80s, but man, if it doesn't work well. I mean, just that idea that there is this shark-like psychopath who is OCD and obsessed and has entered what can only be described as an unhealthy codependent relationship with a group of lunatics in one city. And so whenever he leaves that city, when you have him going up against Dark Side or right. anyone else, it's like, go get him. Every time he fights Two-Face, it's like, just fuck already. <laughs> right? Like, like, you know, like, what, are, what is your big plan? This guy is a lawyer with a gun. Right. You are a billionaire with 20 years of jujitsu training. Yeah. He should not be one of your main <laughs> villains. And so it's very, like, Batman's, like, very psychologically interesting in that way because he's so Byzantine and complex and what's going on in there is labyrinthian and can be explored in a bunch of different ways. Then you lean into your people like your Tony Starks, right. a douchebag operating out of PTSD and guilt. Yep. Uh, yep. You have your Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers, great hero, Captain America. Because he's a guy who risks his life to try to do the right thing. He's the opposite of Spider-Man. Spider-Man didn't go, I want to help the world. Bite me, spider. Right. He went like this. Derp, it sure would be nice to fuck Mary Jane Watson. <laughs> Ow! Oh, I don't have to work out? Cool. Like, and I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man's like one of my favorite superheroes. 
But, you know, again, you talk about the tone of the characters. Right. The thing that attracts me to Superman and always has, that I don't feel has ever fully been, been leaned into. We've been close. Uh, and in ways I love. I love Birthright. I, I love Red Sun. I love Kingdom Come. I can go and go. But it doesn't... It, what, what I like about him is that he's a guy who is a superhero because that's probably the right thing to do since I can fly. Right. And that is bonkers. That's wonderful. And once you... In, if you engage with that texturally and what that says about the guy, he's suddenly a very interesting character. Right. Because, you know, he has no reason to be doing this. No one died. You know, I, I, I did this video regarding... He has no financial Clark. gain even from the job. No, it takes away time from his actual job. Yeah, yeah. And my version of Superman is a little bit less powerful than previous incarnations. Uh, when we meet him, you know, bullets hit, they sting. Right. You know, he, he can't turn back time. We see him figure out his... But we don't see any freeze breath, really. And... I, I, something about making him a little weaker makes him endlessly more compelling to, right, to me. Right, right. Because he needs to, the idea that he needs food. You know, the idea that if I don't eat lunch, there's an image in uh, issue four or five that I'm tremendously proud of, which is, it's kind of a Spider-Man-esque image. It's Superman on his lunch break eating Chinese food <laughs> on the side of a building. This, this janitor comes out, he's like, oh, you're that guy. And Clark is like, yeah, they give me too much. Do you want to finish it? <laughs> A very Clark type thing. Yeah, very Clark type thing.